we're going to dig into how you can help identify the right patients at the right time for your care management programs that you might be running. My name is Carissa Crawford. I'm the sales director supporting Arcadia's Western Markets, and I'm excited to dig into today's challenges, a little bit of what the traditional approaches have been to identifying patients for care programs, and then perhaps offer some suggestions around how data can really help you think of a new process and a new way to determine what's the right best way to have the greatest impact on the population that you're caring for. To get us started, uh, I'd really love to hear from everyone who's walking by or in the audience on some of the challenges you have, but some common themes that we hear in the market, and I think you are all living each day, is staff shortages. Uh, a recent article in Health Affairs, I think, called out that we had the greatest decline in nurses in throughout the pandemic of a drop of over 100,000 nurses out there in the workforce that are struggling to really rebound and recover. But that's not just a nursing problem alone. Care programs often include the entire care team from physicians to social workers to pharmacists to the nurses who are all currently trying to, and being asked to do more with less time, fewer team members and a greater challenge ahead of them. The second common theme that we're seeing is, are they the right patients? You might have patients enrolled in your programs, but perhaps they've been in that program for what's going on six months, a year, or a longer time. Are they able to really reach the outcomes you were hoping for? Or are they even engaging in their own program back? And then of course, panel sizes, that ties to the, the staffing shortages. The fewer um, on your team, there's a really, I think everyone would benefit from dedicated supported care of a care managed program, whether you're a healthy individual, you're suffering from a certain disease or you're managing a complex comorbidities across the board. Um, the idea of how should patients really triage the right individuals to the right team members that they do have um, and how can we start to think about the process of automation. I know these aren't the only challenges though. So anyone who's walked by, are there any other challenges you're seeing out there in the market? No one? All right. Worth a shot. Uh, so as we think about how um, some of our customers and have out, been out there using traditional approaches to identifying patients, we see a really common theme of looking at who's the highest cost members, who is perhaps starting to become a higher cost or a rising risk, in other words, for the program that perhaps have historically been healthy. The idea there, can we get ahead of some increased uptick in costs and start to get them back on a well-managed, well-cared for trajectory that they might have once been on? The challenges around this though is that a concept of high rising risk is using an algorithm that's not necessarily designed for stratification purposes. Instead, it's designed around risk adjustment. How can we make sure that we're identifying those patient, the conditions, and then getting the right reimbursement to support those programs. Uh, some of those drivers though, for that are gonna be driving risk, aren't always gonna drive the fact, aren't always the same drivers that, imp that define the concept of impactability. So here at Arcadia, we think about impactability, meaning what's the delta between the patient's care outcome and the cost to manage that patient if they didn't have an intervention versus if they did get enrollment into your program and support along the way. Can we start to quantify that concept of true impact in the effort and daily work that your, your teams are doing on a daily basis to support the programs? We believe that that data does exist. We've developed algorithms and actually a suite of algorithms that help us tell that story and narrative around impactability. If you look here, we're looking at John Doe, 72 year old male in green, who had a history of um, utilization pattern that would that represents just one patient where we actually at Arcadia have over 170 million patient records that we can use to train these algorithms on and tap into real patient stories and real patient data to start to understand what's the likelihood that if we do add an intervention here where that orange and that purple line pick up, can we start to see a quantifiable difference in the utilization pattern, the cost of John Doe's care, as well as the quality of life that he's living and the care outcomes of that program. The idea being that if you can add an intervention at that point where those two lines diverge, the intervention being the appropriate care program, you can start to run the analysis and start to see the true, yes, quantifiable cost savings of managing John Doe, but also some of those outcomes of well-managed care and healthy stability across, the, across his life. What we've done in Arcadia is we start to realize that not every care program needs the exact same patients. So we started to think about how can we get really specific to identify the right patients for the right care program. Your ideal patient for a complex care management program does and should look different than the ideal patient for a transitional care program, for a social program, for a behavioral health program. And so we started to fine tune these algorithms to say, can we identify the right patient for the right program and pretty promptly get them assigned and enrolled into a program where they're gonna have support all along the way so that we can hopefully keep John Doe, for example, 
a well-managed, low-cost, healthy living and make the most of our patient panels or our care managers panels because they do only have finite time, regardless of how many you have on your staff. There is always more patients than there are care managers to really enroll in these programs. And we believe that the data allows you to start to tell a really strong story around who should you prioritize, not only for the outreach, but for the engagement into those programs, and ultimately start to predict who's likely to engage back in their program, in their care, and be an active partner for your care managers along the way. With that, I would love to see what questions there are. And if, yes, where do you start? Can you say a little bit more in terms of as a, So I think where we always are gonna say is start with the data. So that's where we started. What we have available is these algorithms that we could seamlessly deploy upon you. But for ours and you, if you were just getting started, the idea is what narrative does your own data tell? Can we pull that together? And for that, I'm looking at the clinical records, the health plan data that you might have and start to see what um, your own patient panel and the care that you're giving out to your population looks like. From there, we start to able to seamlessly start to run some of these algorithms where you can start to see what percentage of your population falls into the category we would consider highly impactable or strongly impacted. We do have some that we would say, you know, not very likely impactable. An example there would be a patient who's recently diagnosed with cancer. They are already likely very high touch and going to remain a high cost patient for the short term future. Hopefully they do well in their patients, but they would be not likely impactable in a complex care management program or one of the others. So simple answer and a complex answer is start with the data, see what the story tells and understand from there what percentage of your population seems impactable. And then you can start to think of, are you appropriately staffed to enroll them in particular programs? Yes. Ah, it's a great question. So much like, and I apologize for that feedback. Um, the question was, how do you know if the interventions are working? Again, it's always gonna come back to the data. We use the data to fine tune the algorithm to understand who's likely to be impacted. That was trained on real patient data. We looked at patients, found similar matches of the two stories, one of which had an intervention, one of which did not. And we could start to see the actual outcome of total cost, quality of care, gap closure efforts, and this, the quality of the individual's life. What we're able to do when you're a customer is you actually, we can turn back to your data and you can run that same analysis and look at cohorts, those who fell into care programs and those who didn't and start to compare the total cost, well, depending on the metric that you're using to define, did it work um, and start to compare those cohorts. Yes, the question was, uh, we talked about telling the story of your own data and how do you start with that and how can you really start to understand what those themes might be and dig into it. So the first step for any customer is really to make sure that we've integrated the data and it's of high quality and trustworthy. So there's a great deal of effort that goes into making sure we get the data right. Without that, none of these interventions are really gonna be as impactful as they can be. Um, and from there, you can start to see across your own data where you might have the trends. Do you have a big uptick in behavioral health? Maybe that's a sign that if you're not running a behavioral health program today, it's an exp expansion option for you when it comes to care management. Others might say, you know what? We have a ton more acute events than we've had historically. Are we running enough um, transitional care programs? Or what, ha what would happen if we could uptick or increase our utilization of that program? We do do some forecasting and modeling of what that might look like if you were to say, have a 10% increase in the number of patients you could enroll in a particular program. What would be the anticipated readmission outcome, the anticipated uptick in PCP visits we might expect? So that you can start to really see that narrative of what it might look like and then make sure you're prepared for those downstream impacts if you do put programs in place. Any other questions from an aisle, an audience? Or stories of what's worked well for you? <laughs> okay, well if not, thank you for coming today. I appreciated the conversation.